Notes back. Chair now recognizes the ranking member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Parnas, for being here today. Um, your involvement with the real Russian hoax about Joe Biden began in 2018 when, as a big donor and a big supporter of Donald Trump's, you were introduced to Rudy Giuliani and you began working with him to dig up dirt on Joe Biden Ukraine. If you can just tell us quickly how you got involved in that. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I, became, I, I was a donor at the time. Uh, I became doing business with Rudy Giuliani. He, was in, he got involved in a business I was doing called Fraud Guarantee. And in the midst, we started spending a lot of time together until eventually in November of 2018, he approached me and asked me about my connections in Ukraine. After telling him about people that I knew and things that I heard, he, at that point then he wanted me to go to Ukraine to find Viktor Shokin, the prosecutor general. And basically uh, he wanted to go from uh, his fraud guarantee to guaranteeing a fraud uh, on the American people. But after turning over every stone and going down every rabbit hole, including interviewing Viktor Shokin and Zlachevsky, the owner of Burisma, did you ever find the smoking gun or any evidence that Donald Trump was looking for to paste on Joe Biden? On the contrary, uh, Representative Raskin, uh, not only did we keep hitting dead walls and not finding the smoking gun, but we kept running into uh, sources of the information that was coming out of Russia. Uh, in fact, Joe Biden was part of a global campaign, including by the United States, to oppose corruption and to go after the corrupt forces in Ukraine. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. At what point did the campaign to dig up dirt on Biden become a campaign to spread disinformation and lies about Biden? Uh, at some point, uh, when we hit a, a few brick walls, um, all of a sudden then I saw the shift uh, between the BLT group, which included John Solomon, the media personality, and Rudy Giuliani and other Trump lawyers, to start trying to push narratives that were we had no, uh, they were not validated. We had no way to validate them. Basically, uh, a letter would come over from somebody in Ukraine. I'd hand it over to John Solomon. Next thing you knew, you were, he was on Fox TV two hours later with uh, Sean Hannity. Um, at what point did Mr. Giuliani begin working directly with Russian agents and Russian assets, individuals who would later become sanctioned by Donald Trump's own Treasury Department? for spreading propaganda and disinformation against Joe Biden? Uh, it was sometime in uh, probably around May, June of 2019. W were you aware, was Mr. Giuliani aware that these people were basically just doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin? Absolutely. So he had no hesitation about spreading lies that were concocted by Russian agents? As long as it fit the narrative, absolutely not. How were you and Giuliani able to take these false allegations peddled by corrupt officials and Russian agents and promote and amplify them here in the United States in our political system? Weren't media groups skeptical of your claims? Um, most media groups, uh, I'd probably say all except for Fox and a few other uh, right-wing media groups uh, didn't want to take any of the information and that ag uh, aggravated uh, Rudy Giuliani and John Solomon and other players. And the main group that was being pushed through was Fox, uh, John, Sean Hannity, and some other media personnel over there. But then there was also other people that were doing the bidding for the Russian uh, people in Congress, like Senator Ron Johnson, like Congressman Pete Sessions that sits here right now that was with me from the very beginning on this journey into finding up the digging dirt on Joe Biden. Is Putin's war on Ukraine today, which has cost hundreds of thousands of people's lives, is that part of the vaunted Russia hoax, Russia hoax? Absolutely not. Is it real? Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to ask you a more personal question, if I might, Mr. Parnas, because uh, in my several years living through this extraordinary period of American history, I've tried to ask people like Michael Cohen and Cassidy Hutchinson. I've wondered about people like General Milley, General Kelly. Why did you break with all of the deceit and corruption and lies of Donald Trump? How did you get out of that culture? I mean, it was very difficult. I actually had to head a brick wall myself and get arrested and uh, to be able to get out of that cult. Uh, because when you're in that cult, when you're around them, you're only, you have blinders on and, and you're only able to see a certain amount of information. You're only able to hear the certain amount of information. You're not 
allowed to go out of the outside out of the circle. And if you go outside of the circle, then you're not in the circle. So eventually you brainwash yourself to believing certain things that are not true. When I was arrested and able to and had some time to reflect and really understand what was going on, I started realizing looking back and thinking back to moments in time of where I was started thinking myself that this is this can't be true and we we're doing something wrong. Well, thank you for telling the truth and helping America to end this nightmare. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. Chair now recognizes the